there's a waspy thing. Sorry. Hi! Welcome back to my Curiously Vintage Acres. There's my kid. Say hi, Keenan. Hello, kid. No, hi, Keenan. Oh. Wait. Huh? Say hi, Keenan. Why would I say hi to myself? Because you just said hi, kid. Well, it could be a kid watching. So, he's goofy. Thank you. And I know it's been a little while since we've done a video, so I wanted to bring you guys with us today. We bought four of the small apple trees from Tractor Supply for three dollars each which was an amazing deal however we bought them right before we headed into our super busy part of june all of june is going to be busy i've talked about it in the past so we're going to get these apple trees dug one of them is actually starting to die so that's the first one that's going to go in but it's going to go kind of off in case it doesn't come back that way we haven't lost any space if it doesn't come back so we'll see you guys in a few minutes as we start to dig Guys, so here's the tree I was telling you about that has started to kind of die off. We bought these and then headed out of town to go pick up my son from Army Boot Camp. I stuck it in this bucket of water yesterday. It's supposed to rain. We were waiting for the rain to kind of soften the ground. So, hey, Bun Buns! Okay, so we're going to get out here. And you can see that our trees and our orchard, so to speak, it's coming along super. I mean, honestly, I don't think I could be terribly much happier with this. We are getting some pest damage, which I will have to look into. But we also have lots of new growth. Ah, there's my pests. That is the Japanese beetle, and they are notorious for eating lots of things. And they are having very good time stop on my leaves so we will take care of that i will do some research to find what is going to be the most natural way to work on this this tree is a little slanted <laughs> keenan put that one in so i think we're going to put this one right there so he's going to start getting that dug up I am going to go find my other three and get those placed so that my digger can dig and we'll see you in a bit I'll start picking off Jeffrey's beetles later okay so I've got them placed you can see one right here here. He's working on one and there's one right there. But uh, I figure while he's trying to work on getting those open. Hey, don't forget, don't lose the metal piece in the yard. Put them in your pocket. You only have 5,000 pockets. So while he's working on that, I figured I would show you a couple other things that we have worked on and kind of give you an update. I've got three grapevines that we have put in. This one does not look so great. But there is new growth on it, so I'm not worried about it yet. We have got, oh, there's lots of new growth on these. They look great. Ha, ha, ha. We are going to put in T-posts. Um, basically a log side and then the middles of each of them and then we're going to run some wire across to espel you them so he asked for help so let me go help him okay so he was asking for help to get the tree out of here and this is the one that was dying so this came out so I am a little less convinced that it's going to live, but I think what I'm going to do is, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to think about this. I'm either going to put it in the ground as is, or I'm going to put it in a pot. I'm thinking a pot might be the better avenue to do. So I think we're just going to put that in a pot and keep it watered, keep it sheltered, and see if we can't get it back. So I'll keep you up to date on how that works or how it doesn't. In the meantime, my digger is still digging. He's such an awesome help. Sometimes, when he wants to be. 
So this is crazy. I was gonna put the apple tree into this planter right here. It's, I think, a one gallon planter, maybe two. I'm not sure that you buy a little shrub or tree from the garden center. And I thought that this little plant was dead. So I pulled it out. I didn't realize that there was new growth on it. I'm not positive what that is, but I believe it is a pecan tree. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this back in the pot. <laughs> and <laughs> I've got to find something else now for this other tree. I planted stevia in this last year, so I may clean this out because stevia doesn't come back. It is definitely just an annual. But I can fluff that up, add some rabbit poop to it to fertilize and I think I'm going to put the tree the apple tree in here and I'm going to add some more dirt to this what I believe is a pecan tree once these leaves come up then I'll know what it is um, but the bark or the budding bark looks an awful lot like that which I know that this is a pecan tree so, lots going on here, so I'm excited to be back. So I'm going to start with what I believe is the uh, pecan seedling. And I'm just going to fluff up this, pull out some of these big leaves, even though the leaves aren't going to hurt it. Um, I've actually, I'm working on a leaf mulch pile down the hill. There is a pecan. So if we leave that in there, it'll probably sprout. <laughs> so I'm just basically going to put my little divot in there. And I scooped up some rabbit poop. Rabbit poop is a cool fertilizer. And that means that you can add it straight to your garden and straight to your plants without fear of burning. Like with cow poop and horse poop. Or manure is the technical term. Um, you have to compost that stuff, otherwise it will burn your plants, it will kill them. So, got that in, got my little divot. I am going to try to place this in. And it's off to the side just because that was kind of the way it grew. So this is just a mix of some store-bought compost and peat moss. And we're just going to start dumping this in here. Okay, so next up, we're going to try and clean this out some. You see there's lots of little weeds and stuff, lots of leaves. Again, the leaves aren't going to hurt anything. I just noticed something very interesting, guys. This is my driveway, and I'm fairly certain that's a watermelon plant. It's not very big, but that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to tell everybody to leave it. I'll mark it with something, see what we can get out of that. But yeah, this is all gravel driveway next to the concrete driveway. <laughs> That's awesome. So anyway, we're back to just, we're going to weed this out, clean it out, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did with the pecan tree. All that's left is to water this down really well and to water our pecan, I believe, sapling down really well. The peat moss and compost mixture is kind of dry, mainly because of the peat moss, but also because we have it mixed up in a wading pool in our garage, so it's not been rained on, it's not been contaminated. So we're going to water these down really well and I will keep you up to date on how this apple tree goes and if the sapling over there lives, maybe I can update you on what that is. So why don't we go take a look and see how the trees look down the hill. 
Okay, so we have a beautiful line of tidy itty bitty apple trees, but you know, they all have to start somewhere. It looks like he did a really good job. Hopefully that'll stay mostly upright. It's only very slightly slanted. It looks a little bit more slanted in the video. So yeah, I think that'll do, pig. We still have a ton of other stuff to plant, as you saw in the previous clip. Blackberries, we've still got raspberries to plant. We have this pile of trash and, and wood and stuff that was here when we got here. And, oh, did somebody lay an egg? Did somebody lay an egg? We'll be right there. Last year we had a big mullein plant in here and it was a second year plant, but I'm not seeing any fresh stuff. So that's okay. Let's go over here and check out what this lady's squawking at. And as we go along, you can see right here, we have two volunteer squash plants of some sort. Nothing so far has fruited. We've had tons of flowers, but no fruit. So I have no idea it's volunteer. So it's probably some sort of cross and it's not going to produce anything. But look, we have a little friend right here too. Pretty, pretty. There's some leaf miners on that weed over there. Hi. These are the Valentine babies. Let's go see what our lady is squawking about. Usually when they make that racket, it's because they've just laid an egg. Hey, Mr. Rooster. Hey, pretty girls, I don't have anything, I'm sorry. You guys eat all your food already? <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything. You don't like me, huh? Okay. Let's go see. They are silly. Okay, let's get in here. I have to rebuild our coop. Oh, there's actually four, five. Yep, this one is really warm. So we have a Oh, there's six. Whew, okay, you guys, I've got to let you go because I need two hands for this job. So six eggs so far, and I have an audience. So, you guys, thanks for watching. I'm glad you're sticking with me for this and being patient. Hey guys, I just wanted to add a real quick addendum to the video where I was collecting the eggs. I actually found three more in another corner of the coop. And I'm sure you guys are wondering why they're on the floor and not in nest boxes. In this particular coop, um, it's really way too small for them. We have got to build a newer one, a bigger one, and a better one, of course. Um, again, that's one of those things that I have not been able to get to so far. But we tried the nest boxes in this coop, and they just will not lay in the nest boxes. Um, so we just took them out. We keep the pine shavings fairly clean. Uh, we try to keep up with collecting them regularly. And we really haven't had a problem with them being laid on the ground. Um, <clears throat> that coop was actually built at our last house as a meat chicken coop. And, you know, they, they had their little run. And then after that, it became the baby coop. So any of them that weren't ready for the big coop yet but we're too big for the brooder went into that and now it's our standard coop when the raccoon got the silkies a couple few months ago we put the new babies into the tractor now 
once I get the big coop built, we might integrate them. I'm not sure at this point. I really love my Rhode Island Reds and my brown or my Tetra Browns. Tetra Browns is a tractor supply only breed. Uh, they lay really well. They lay big eggs usually. Um, and I really like the Tetra Browns, the Rhode Island Reds, and the mixes of those two. Um, we've got a great rooster. He is two years old I think this spring and has yet to flog any of us um, the most he does is just eye us up and down so I really like that trait in those and so anyway I just wanted to let you guys know because I figured there would be a comment why don't you have nest boxes well I have my reasons and my reasons might differ from others and that's okay so anyway again thanks for watching and we'll see you next time